I'm really happy to be here. Uh, let me first say that uh, Asia and the Pacific has a legacy. We are among the first region who recognize the importance of regional processes for the 2030 agenda. And since 2014, with the power of people's movement and civil society and supported by UNESCO, we set up a regional civil society engagement mechanism that aims really to harness grassroots voices in SDGs processes. But why are we engaging? We have a very clear reasons for that. First, we have so many examples on how regional dialogue can lead to progressive policy setting, as well as addressing systemic issue needed, especially for now in the time of the COVID-19 recovery. For example, mobilizing MOI through regional cooperation on taxation, tracking on ODA commitments, and building regional mechanism to review the impact of trade investment agreements and new technologies and innovations. Second, it creates proximity and accessibility for right holders, including local and grassroots communities to directly engage in the regional discussion and work closely with their government at the national or local level. Regional processes should facilitate the specific needs of marginalized constituency in our country, and then this is supposed to be supported by allocating spaces and resources. We think the role of the regional forum could be better defined in the follow-up and review process. More HLPF sessions should be dedicated to systematically integrate regional forum perspective to inform the global process. But not only that, but also a continuous feedback loop should be created to flow back from HLPF into regional, sub-regional, and national levels to track the implementation of recommended actions. This recommendation should also be directed at the national and regional level UN system. We can also do regional VNR, where we can actually have the interim VNR to the regional forum before submission of the final reports uh, to the HLPF, and then in the following year to submit a follow-up report to the regional forum for implementation. Lastly, COVID-19 has reinforced our belief that current development model combined with capitalist globalization, patriarchy, colonialism, militarism is actually inherently flawed. And that it is possible if we have the political will to realize a feminist, right-based, people-centered development model that address the inequalities of wealth, power, and resources. We in Asia Pacific, we want development justice and we say that only solidarity and system change can actually uh, make us recover from COVID-19. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now 